Thanks for checking out the Next Level Radio YouTube page. If you like what you hear, be sure to head over to nextlevelradioonline.com. There you can find out how to listen to more podcasts with great guests, including ones that are not on the YouTube page. You can either download them on iTunes, Stitcher, or just stream them straight from the website. you also find the links to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep you updated on everything we have going on. And you also find some other great stuff, including event coverage like Philly Comic Con and movie reviews as well. Again, that's nextlevelradioonline.com. Thanks for listening. Uh, I drove Harrison Ford on Raiders of the Lost Ark 3. And I said, what was that like? And he said, Harrison smoked a joint on the way to the set every day. And he said, one day Harrison Ford gets in the car with a soft cam. And he goes, Harrison, what are you doing? And he says, they ran out of rolling papers. <laughs> and he opens up the soft cam lid and dope smoke fills up the Jaguar. And then Harrison Ford is sticking his head in the soft cam. <laughs> Snorfing weed. Hey everybody, it's Greg Proops, the smartest man in the world. The specky one from Whose Lawn Is It Anyway? And you're grooving to Next Level Radio. Get it? Episode 16, Season 2 of the showcast here on Next Level Radio. I am Ben Beck, joined as always, or at least once again after last week, Adam Gorey and Steve Richards. Guys, welcome back to the, well, the beginning of the podcast at least. Oh, thanks. So. <laughs> Uh, I know last week we were recording was a little bit different with us because Adam, you were on vacation. So, yes, yeah, I was down in Florida, sunny Florida, and apparently it was uh, it got cold again up here for a couple of days. Yeah, temperatures still aren't back to what they were, but you know, fifties, low sixties. I'll I'll take it for spring. I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we came back, uh, we came back on Friday and. The uh, the captain was like, uh, you know, uh, we're going to uh, Philadelphia. Temperature there about forty three degrees, and we're all like, ah, son of a bitch. Because <laughs> it, it was like high eighties in Florida. Yeah, you guys went to Disney, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we uh, went there for a wedding. So uh, normally I would not take a four month old to Disney, but in this case we uh, didn't really have much choice. So uh, it was really fun. Though uh, Sam, our son, was really, uh, really good actually. For an infant, so it was actually really fun. Busy, you guys, but fun. Did you guys go down there for a wedding and then come back for another wedding? Yeah, so we we went down Sunday, came back Friday. The wedding down in Disney was was on Tuesday. Came back Friday and then had a wedding on Saturday. Sounds like a fun trip. Two weddings in one week. Yeah, so, yeah, that's interesting. Steve, how was your week while uh, while Adam was away going down to Disney? Mm, that was pretty good, I guess. Uh, I helped a friend move today, so that was fun. <laughs> Did they get you, like, pizza and beer? Nah, we went to Bertucci's after. Well, that's close enough. Yeah. Bertucci's has uh, Bertucci's has pizza. And beer, as far as I know. And beer, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not a sponsor of the, of the podcast. No. Bertucci's. No. Neither is I've Disney been... World, but... Oh, that's true. <laughs> that would be awesome if Disney was a was a sponsor. I don't know if we ever asked this uh, to you, Ben. How was your week? Uh mine was pretty good. Um, I that's have. Right. All right, let's move on. <laughs> You're <Next>. an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, we went uh, just a regular work Nobody week. Nobody really cares. I figured as much. Uh, nothing interesting throughout the week. However, Friday night, um, one of my supervisors at my day job is actually leaving this coming Wednesday. So Friday night, we went out to a bar on South Street in Philadelphia. We had a a thirty dollar all you can drink and all you can eat uh, time when on the second floor reserved just for us. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Connected with a lot of coworkers I don't usually talk to, and had a lot to drink and did shots and stuff like that. All you it was fun. For, or you can, all you can drink for thirty bucks is pretty good. It was it was funny because I was debating on whether or not I was going to actually be there long enough to drink thirty dollars worth of anything. And then I realized that half of my coworkers are complete lushes. <laughs> so I was about two beers in and started seeing like all the shots and drinks that they were doing. And I was like, all right, uh, I'll, I'll splurge the $30 for the bracelet. And it only cost me like four bucks because I had, uh, the beers were on special for $2 yinglings, which was awesome. Steve and I did, uh, we had a bachelor party like a year and a half ago where we went to a place and it was, I think we, we each paid maybe like 25 bucks for two hours of all you can drink. And I'm pretty sure all of us got our money's worth out of that one. 
Well, the funny thing is that it cost me $30 for the bracelet, but the night ended up costing me about closer to 60 because I came back to the parking lot with a Prostitute. parking ticket. No, parking no. ticket on my car. Sorry. I only paid for about, um, it was one of those meters by uh, the South Street Bridge where you, you, you pay in advance for how long you plan to stay. And if you're not back by that time, you get a ticket. Yeah, yeah. And I only paid till 8, and I was there till 9.30. So by 8.30, I was like, screw it. My car's already got a ticket. I might as well just hang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the ticket is, is one price. It's not. It's not going to change. Yeah. And they can't ticket you more than once. So I already had like a $35 ticket on my car. I was like, all right, whatever. What you should do is actually carry that ticket around with you. And just put it back under my windshield. just put it back under your windshield. That's not a bad idea, actually. And not pay like, for any meters anymore. <laughs> I that, might do that. That does not work. Oh. <laughs> There's dates on those tickets. <laughs> Did you try it or Damn you it. thought about trying, trying it, Steve? Oh, I've heard people try it before. It's, okay. that's, that's been a thing before. All right. Hmm. I figured so. we weren't the first to, to think of that option. Probably not. <laughs> so, uh, But that was my week. So, Or my weekend, rather. Well, that's exciting. So, and then yesterday I binge watched uh, all of Phase One of Marvel in anticipation oh, yeah. for Avengers. Yeah, is is this the be this is the beginning of Phase Two? No, Phase Two goes until Ant Man. Phase Two is we're, in process. We're still in the process of Phase Two. Yeah, okay. Phase Two will end with Ant Man. Phase in July. Two started after the last Avengers movie. Phase Two started with Iron Man Three. Okay. So it was Iron Man 3, Thor the Dark World, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers 2, and Ant-Man. Are you binge-watching those? Um, well, considering I'm going to a screening of Avengers tomorrow, I will not have time <laughs> to, to do the rest of the movies. I binge-watched Phase 1 up until Avengers. Uh, it, chances are I'm probably going to end up going to see Avengers a second time opening weekend as well. So maybe over the course of this, this next week, I'll binge-watch the other... Or, I'll watch the rest of the movies. Well, by next week, all three of us will have watched it, so which will be pretty cool. And next week is a pretty cool week for us, but we'll uh, we'll reveal that a little bit later on. What we got going on for next week? Uh, for this week, we have an interview where Steve and I got to sit down and t- well, not sit down, but uh, speak to Stephanie Weir from well, the you FX guys show. Probably were sitting. I down. was sitting. Yeah. yeah, I was sitting. <laughs> we don't, but we don't know if Stephanie was sitting. You got to sit That's down so and talk to somebody on the phone. <laughs> Well, Steve and I were sitting. We don't know if Stephanie was sitting, but we spoke with Stephanie Weir from FX's The Comedians, uh, which was a pretty good interview. And so we'll have that coming up for you a little bit later on in the podcast. But for right now, let's move forward and let's hit the box office for the week. So, how's the box office looking for this week, Adam? Uh, number five. Only one new movie to the box office, and I know Steve and I weren't here for this portion of it last week, but not really any big name movies came out other than maybe the age of... Is it Adeline or Adeline? It's probably I think Adeline. It's, I think it's Adeline. Yeah. Uh, number five. Um, in its second week, Unfriended, the movie that's possibly about Facebook, but I'm not sure. Uh, Actually, drop- I think it's about Skype. Skyping, unfriending <laughs> people on Skype, which I'm probably going to do to Ben and Steve very shortly, uh, but probably won't turn into a horror movie. Uh, anyway, that dropped back from number three. It made $6.2 million, two-week total of $25.1. Uh, home stayed at number four. In its fifth week now, it made another $8.3 million. Five-week total, $153.7 million. Uh, and then opening up The Age of Adeline at number three, thirteen point three million that has a 53% on Rotten Tomatoes, 73% from the audience. Um, and then finally, number two, staying at number two, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 with another $15.5 million for a two-week total of 43.9. And still at number one, Furious 7 with 18.2 for a four-week total of $320.5 million. I, I can't... Is it still at a zero on Rotten Tomatoes? Because I know Furious that's what it was seven. last week. No, no, no. Uh, Paul Bart Malkoff. Oh, no, I can't that's believe a four. That's, that's it's a at four. a four now? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm 
I'm really shocked that that's number two at the box office right now. Yeah, well, I mean, it's going to get blown out of the water this coming week. So, Well, so is the number one movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, when the number one movie makes 18.2, I'm pretty sure uh, the number one movie next week is going to make uh, close to three times that amount. Yeah, and I or, I mean, not ha- three times, 30 times that amount. <laughs> I did actually get to see Furious 7, actually, finally, this weekend. Oh, did you? What did you think? Uh, it's pretty badass. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I don't think it's the best of the franchise, but it's up there. It's really good. Well, it's been number one for four weeks, so I mean, that's and a good I th- run. And I think it's it beat Frozen for the record of all-time box office. Really? I think so. I it, thought I read that earlier. It is also certified fresh, 82%. Yeah. On Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's really good. Um, I will say I was a little, up, being a WWE fan, I was a little upset when The Rock, or Dwayne Johnson now, left the WWE, uh, but he has found his calling as an action star. I, I firmly believe that. Because uh, he's certified badass in this movie. And the last two minutes with the voiceover by Vin Diesel is a really nice goodbye to Paul Walker. So I, I it, it's worth seeing. Tear jerker? It's, you do get a little choked up. Yeah. I won't lie. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's get on to what's coming out this week. Uh, I'm going to save the best for last, so I'm going to start off there because there's really not much else coming out, and usually there wouldn't be because uh, nobody really wants to compete with the the big movie coming out this coming week, May 1st. Yeah. Uh, Far From the Madding Crowd, which is a drama in Vic- that takes place in Victorian England where the independent and heartstrong, or sorry, headstrong Bethesda Everdeen attracts three very different suitors. Uh, a sheep farmer, a reckless sergeant, and a prosperous and mature bachelor. Uh, that stars Carrie Mulligan, Matthias Schonertz, Michael Sheen, and Tom Sturridge. Uh, you also have Welcome to Me, which is a, a dramedy about uh, Alice Klieg, who wins the Mega Millions lottery and immediately quits her psychiatric me- or quits her psych- psychiatric meds and buys her own talk show. Uh, Kristen Wiig and James Marsden are in that, along with Linda Card- uh, Cardellini and Wes Bentley. Uh, next up, you have Tangerines, which is a war drama. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the summary of that one. Uh, documentary <laughs> coming out, Iris, which is about fashion icon Iris Apfel. Um, and let's see, there's one, two, three, four. God, there's a lot of movies that are like little movies and probably don't even have... Uh, Large openings, but I'll read them anyway. Uh, the 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared, which is an extremely long title. I was going to say, is that the whole title? That is the whole title. Uh, a much shorter title for the next movie, Ride, uh, with Helen Hunt in that. Far From Men, also coming out. Hyena, or Hyena crime drama, coming out. Um, and Days of Grace, coming out. And then, so the big one this week, coming out, Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, which is coming out in 4,200 theaters. Uh, I only have numbers for Welcome to Me and Far From the Madden Crowd. Far From the Madden Crowd is, says nine theaters. Uh, Welcome to Me says limited. So really you're only looking at, looking at Avengers Age of Ultron in 4,200 theaters uh, coming out this week, which to, to put that into perspective, the most uh, in theaters right now in this top five of the box office was Furious 7 and 3,800. So... Uh, Avengers will be in even more than that, so I think that's a that's a layup at number one. I think I can I yeah can that's easily say that's boring. Guess the number that it's going to make. It's yeah, obviously going to uh, be number one. I'll let you guys guess first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> two thirteen and a half. I'm going to say two fifty seven. Holy Christ! <laughs> well, the first one made. 207. Yeah, 207. Um, I'm going to say 227.7. So I'm going big or go home. Yeah, yeah. well, you guys are idiots because I win the prices right rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, $1. <laughs> yeah. Um, how? I, I, I still think as, as big as this one's going to be, I still think Star Wars blows it out of the water when it comes out in December. Oh, I have no doubt. I I believe I agree with that as well. Yeah, I think Star Wars might make three hundred, close to. So, I mean, because it's been what uh, almost twenty years since the last Star Wars. No, not twenty no, years. No, not that long. It's been like ten years. Yeah, but it's been like forty years since a good Star Wars. Since a good one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So, 
Uh, but that so, is it for uh, for my end, at least. Uh, all right, moving on to my end then, as with the DVD and Blu-ray releases for the week, I'm looking forward to this one, and you'll know why in a minute. Uh, but starting off first uh, with the Boy Next Door, starring Jennifer Lopez and Ryan Guzman. That's what you're looking forward to. That was it. No, no, just <laughs> no, no, just just wait, just okay. wait it out. Um, Thirty-five. You know, a big J Lo person. Yeah. Thirty-five. Thirty-five point <laughs> four million at the box office. Eleven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Thirty-eight percent from the critics. Didn't that uh, just least, that just came out in like January? I'm not sure. No, it did. I'm telling you. Oh yeah, January twenty-third. Yeah. Yep. Uh, recently cheated on married woman falls for a younger man who has moved in next door, but their torrid affair soon takes a dangerous turn. Um, buy Netflix or pass. What are we saying with pass. this one? Unless you're a big JLo fan. Yep. Throw it in the yeah. trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a pass. <laughs> Wrong a pass segment, but yeah, that works. Uh, it's a pass for me as well. Uh, next up, The Gambler, starring Mark Wahlberg and Jessica Lang, 33.4%. At, or 34, 33.4 million at the box office, uh, 46% from the critics, 35% from the viewers. Uh, lit professor and gambler Jim Bennett's debt causes him to borrow money from his mother and a loan shark. Further complicating his situation is his relationship with one of his students. Uh, so what are we saying with this one? I'm a, I'm a Mark Wahlberg fan, but I'm not too sure about this one. Buy Netflix or pass. What are we saying? Um, yeah, is his I'm mother your... the loan shark? I don't know. No, it's a joke. No, no, no. I think John Goodman is is, is the the lone shark in this one. Apparently, it was a joke. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I I see what he's saying. From his mother and a lone shark, he was borrowing money. Mm. Ah. But um. <laughs> uh, I'm on your boat though. I I like Mark Wahlberg, but I'm not sure how I feel about this. So actually, this is gonna be a pass. How about uh, you, Steve? I'll watch it on TV whenever it comes out on TV. But like gonna... HBO TV or or like commercials and edited TV? Uh, probably HBO TV. Uh, I'm sure it'll be on HBO soon enough. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't spend money on it that I'm not already spending toward my cable bill. True. Uh, moving on to Inherent Vice, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Josh Brolin, made eight million at the box office, but I think that was a limited release. This is another one that came out in January as well. Uh, 1970, a drug-fueled Los Angeles detective, Larry Doc Sportello, investigates the disappearance of a former girlfriend. Uh, 72% from the critics, 55 from the audience. Um, it's a Paul Thomas Anderson directed and written movie, and I mean they're pretty spot, they're pretty good. So, what are we thinking for this one? Buy Netflix or pass? I'll give it a Netflix. Steve, I'm positive this will be on HBO at some point or one of the premium channels that I'm forced to pay for and so i'll watch it on one of those because i i have interest in it but um i just didn't catch it yet so whenever it comes out i'll watch it yeah i mean it's got a decent cast joaquin phoenix josh brolin owen wilson reese I, witherspoon my rudolph uh my rudolph jenna malone martin short benicio del toro wait reese uh, witherspoon is in it yes she is huh. no, seriously. so um i'll give it a netflix myself i'll wait until it's on netflix and i'll, I'll probably check it out so, uh, moving on to the next one this week, uh, The Wedding Ringer, starring Kevin Hart and Josh Gad. Uh, 64.5 million at the box office, 28% from the critics, 71 from the audience. Uh, two weeks shy of his wedding, a socially awkward guy enters into a charade by hiring the owner of a company that provides best men for grooms in need. Uh, this is one of those ones, again, a movie that came out in January that's already releasing you know, in, in April yeah. or, or this May at this point. The Kevin Hart edition of I Love You Man. Um kinda sounds like I it. I guess it could be. Um it's almost like a, a step up from Hitch. Yeah. I think. Um I mean I'll give it a Netflix because I I'm a, a Kevin Hart and a Josh Gad fan plus uh plus the guy from one guy from Lost isn't it Jorge Garcia so Jorge Garcia is in it. Cloris Leachman, uh, Kaylee Cuoco Sweeting. Does she have long hair or short hair in this movie? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because it makes a difference. <laughs> if she has long hair or short hair. <laughs> uh, she's got long hair. All right, I'll Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> because she's got long hair. Yeah. If 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 it, if it was short hair, I might have actually changed it to a pass. Uh, I'm a okay. no either way. So. So I'll probably give it a Netflix. 
So, uh, and the last one for the week, the one that uh, I've been waiting for. Uh, can I get a drum roll for this one? You'll know why in a second. Making its debut on DVD and Blu-ray, Paddington. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, starring... 720% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> ben Wingshaw and Sally Hawkins, uh, a... Seventy-five point three million at the box office, ninety-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics, eighty-three percent from the audience. We already know Steve's going to buy like fifteen copies. Yes, sir. I think he pre-ordered <laughs> it. If I knew how, I would. <laughs> uh, buy Netflix or pass. Steve, I'll let you uh, go first. This is your no. This I'm going to. I'll buy like ten of them. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, I will yeah, absolutely I'll... see it, though, somehow. I don't know how, but somehow I will see the movie. <laughs> I will give it a Netflix. <laughs> uh, yeah, same with me. I'll give it a Netflix. I'll check it out. So those animated movies tend to be pretty decent. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for me with the box office. However, we are not done with this entertainment segment. Uh, it is time now that we move on to Steve's Trailer Trash. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. It's time for the trailer trash. So what kind of new trailers are we looking at this week, Steve? Uh, we start with two uh, second edition trailers. Um, Jurassic World and Fantastic Four both came out, uh, and they're both the uh, trailer number twos, even though Fantastic Four was a teaser. Um, so I'll let you guys, you guys can kind of pick and choose which either one you watch, but I kind of figured that we're all gonna see both of these movies eventually, anyway. So um, I kind of clumped them in. But uh, Ben, we can start with you on what you thought of the newer trailers for this pair of um, blockbusters coming out in the summer. Um, I'm gonna start with Jurassic World. I- I'm I'm a fan of the Jurassic Park movies, uh, Lost World and Jurassic Park Three. So I'm really really looking forward to this one. It looks like they've stepped up production. None of these movies are going to be as groundbreaking as the first one, just because of the technology. Uh, I don't think they're using anything special other than just basic CGI to create these things. So, But I'm a big fan of Chris Pratt, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do, especially since it looks like in the trailer he is a Velociraptor Wrangler. Yeah, he's a uh, whisperer. Which is, yeah, exactly, like he can control them to a degree, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I... It looks like they've taken a little bit of a different approach with the movie from this trailer, you know, with, you know, hunting a dinosaur this time rather than just trying to escape it. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's, um, I think it's a trash to treasure on Jurassic World. Uh, Fantastic Four, on the other hand, um, you say we're probably all going to watch these movies. I'm not going to lie. I think this might be a Netflixer for me. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the original Fantastic Four movies, the last two that they did. The, however, with that being said, this movie can't be any worse than those, hopefully. Um, I don't know yet how I feel about the different approach they're taking to this one. Uh, so uh, I'm going to wait. I may go see it if we get a screening of it. As far as going to the theater and paying for it, I might pass on that. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Dumpster Fire with Fantastic Four. Wow. That is a surprise. Uh, well, I'll start. I'll pick up with Fantastic Four, and then I'll switch it back over to Jurassic World. So, Fantastic Four. Um, you know, I'm not quite as down on it, maybe as Ben is. Um, I too was not a fan of the originals. Uh, however, I am a fan of Kate Mara. Uh, Miles Teller is actually pretty up and coming. I didn't like him at first, but he's he's growing on me. And Michael Jordan's in the film, so. The actor. The basketball player? No. <laughs> oh. No, Michael B. Jordan uh, plays Johnny Storm. <laughs> and to complete the four, uh, Jamie Bell plays the Thang. The Thang? Yes, this is actually a new wave uh, <laughs> Fantastic Four. It's the Thang. Mm. <laughs> Drinks purple drink. Um, and they, I guess they've already announced that there's going to be a second one, so um, I, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty decent. But uh, I'll give that one... Um, did whatever the middle one is, but I'm leaning more towards the trash to treasure, uh, not dumpster. You keep fire. trying to do the middle one. Just name the middle one yourself. All right, keep it in the dumpster or something. <laughs> you gotta keep doing. You gotta do better than that. Though. Close the lid. Uh, all right, I'll think <laughs> of something. But anyway, all right, all right. There we go. I'll try to think of something. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is your segment. I'm not doing your work for you. 
Uh, so I'll, I'll go back, switch it back over to Jurassic World. Um, pretty excited about this one. I actually, originally when the first trailer came out, I wasn't sure what was, if I was going to like it or not, but actually this trailer, uh, did more for me than the first one did. Um, and I, th- I, I, thinking somebody main has to die i mean vincent d'onofrio's in it bryce dallas howard i don't think chris pratt will die but i bet you bryce dallas howard dies at some point uh because she's the one who created the this hybrid uh hybrid monster but um you know a a some large water dinosaur ate a pterodactyl so um that's pretty cool that's, right that's a trash of treasure <laughs> right away for me so <laughs> yeah i thought when i saw when i saw pratt whispering to velociraptors which is the first scene of the new trailer i thought that was sweet and it kind of went from there because it, it's they show the chaos a little bit more that happens in the actual amusement park once it all starts to hit the fan um which is cool because i thought the first trailer didn't really show much but this one definitely got more in depth so yeah. i thought that was cool and i thought i would get i thought i would be the lowest on fantastic four but apparently i'm not <laughs> <laughs> so I, i'm still gonna see it but Kind of like you guys are saying, I I'm not really all that intrigued by it. Just be, I think it might be because of the, I didn't like the first ones either. Um, yeah, but, this one looks much darker than the first one. Yeah, I agree with that. And They're it, to do it, it was kind of weird. It's kind of yeah. It was um, they they went into the backstory and stuff in the in the trailer. So it was kind of cool. I'm I'm I say they're both treasures, but uh, definitely more so Jurassic World than Fantastic Four. Yeah. If if this was a Marvel Studios Fantastic Four, I would have been all about it. Like I would have been 100% on board not even having seen a trailer. But this is 20th Century Fox. So, is it 20th Century Fox or Sony? Either way, it's not Marvel Studios. So, I'm not exactly too confident as of yet. They don't have the best track records with their with their Marvel franchises that they have the rights to. It's 20th Century Fox. Okay. So, with the exception of X Men, they really haven't they they haven't produced many good Marvel uh, franchises yet. Yeah, just give it all to Disney. So, I think they should. I mean, even Sony's working with Disney now to with Spider-Man, get Spider Man yeah. into the Marvel universe. Yeah. So, you know, Twentieth Century Fox, step up your game and do it. Go do it to right. the dark side. So, uh, on a side note, real quick, um, have you guys seen the other three Jurassic Park movies? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Did you know they completely diverted from a plot line uh, that they they teased at in the at the end of the second one, but they never followed through with into the third movie? Yeah, you yeah. did know about that. The third one is completely separate. Like it's not, or it's not completely separate. But it doesn't isn't really William A- H Macy two. in that one? Yeah. Yes. Well, th- at the end of Jurassic Park: Lost World, they actually set up a storyline for a third movie that they never followed through with. Right. So there's a scene at the end of the movie, and spoiler alert, even though the movie's been out since, like, 98, um, when the ship crashes into the port in San Diego, um, there's the T-Rex that's trapped in the cargo hold that escapes and then runs through on the mainland. Um, But there's a question that a lot of people don't tend to ask themselves, and that is that if the T-Rex was trapped in the cargo hold... How did everybody on that boat die? Mm. Especially like the captain of the ship that was inside the the pilot, um, the cockpit. Uh, there's no way that T Rex would have been able to get in there without tearing that cockpit apart to eat the the uh, the captain of the ship. So if the T Rex was trapped inside and the younger T Rex, the baby T Rex, was already off the boat and on the island, how did that? How did everybody on that boat die? Syphilis. No. Oh. Scurvy. Uh, the, <laughs> no. That's more there likely, were, for sure. There were actually... They don't explore this because it was meant to be in the third movie, and the whole third movie... Velociraptors? Yes. Okay. There were actually Velociraptor stowaways on the boat. And the third movie was actually supposed to take place completely on the mainland. Because the Velociraptors were getting all, got off the boat while everybody was chasing the T-Rex. That could have been cool. Yeah. So, but they completely abandoned that plot line and went with the third one. And the third one wasn't bad. So, I but anyway, the third I, one is the one that finally had ter- did the se- second one didn't have pterodactyls, right? No, the third one did. Yeah, it took them till the third movie to introduce one of the best goddamn dinosaurs there ever was. I don't know about you, but the T Rex is goddamn one of the best ones. Yeah, that's an easy one to do. True. 
So anyway, back to you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next trailer we have is called Dope. Uh, it comes out June 19th. Um, it's a coming-of-age comedy drama for the post-hip-hop generation. So get ready, kids. Uh, Malcolm <laughs> is a geek carefully surviving life in the bottoms, a tough neighborhood in Inglewood, California, filled with gangsters and drugs. Um, while juggling his senior year of college applications, interviews, and the SATs, dream is to attend Harvard. A uh, chance invitation to a big underground party leads Malcolm and his friends into a gritty adventure filled uh, adventure filled with offbeat characters and bad choices. Uh, if Malcolm can persevere, he'll go from being a geek to being dope to ultimately being himself. So it's all about finding yourself. Uh, Zoe Kravitz is in it, but that's the only person that I've ever heard of. Forrest Whitaker's in Forrest Whitaker's the narrator. And basketball player Rick Fox. Rick Fox, yeah. So not basketball <laughs> player Michael Jordan, but basketball player Rick Fox is in it as well. Um, what did you guys think of this dope trailer? Ben, you can go first. You want me to go first? All right. Um, you guys are probably going to think I'm going to be harsh because uh, of some of You're my racism. reviews with this time. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an asshole. I am not racist, not in the least. Um, however, I think that if you were to spend money to go see this in theaters, you would be a dope. Yeah, dope. <laughs> Fun. So there it is. He's here. See what I see what i did there um i mean don't get me wrong i think it's got some chuckle moments in the trailer but this is a total wait for netflix thing for me or you know wait to rent it on Redbox or something i'm not going to spend my money to go see this in theaters it's a dumpster fire go ahead, um okay i'll take the reins here uh i'm somewhat on ba- i'm not going dumpster fire because it actually does look entertaining uh that being said i i also would not pay money in the theaters to go see it this is uh something that once it comes out on netflix i'll totally check out um so it's a a leave it in the trash can until it comes out on netflix (laughs) type of thing for me uh so um no it looks pretty good though and by the way the uh, going back to our oscar reviews tony rivalori who was in uh the grand budapest hotel he was the i guess he was the younger who did he play? He played like the the young version of the old guy. He played Zero, who like followed around. Yeah. yeah, yes, that's a much better description for his character. Thank you. <laughs> uh, he's in it, which is uh, he was pretty good in in uh, Grand Budapest. But yeah, this is a a leave in the trash can until it comes out on Netflix. Um, this movie's gonna stink, <laughs> <laughs> like trash. Um, I'm not. I don't know what you want me to say about it. it just doesn't intrigue me at all, and. Trailers are kind of supposed to intrigue you, but I did, didn't do that for me, so I'm gonna throw this one into the uh, into the fire. I mean, the guy who directed this also directed Brown Sugar. Yeah, <laughs> there's talking. a selling point. So, <laughs> That's cooking with Brown Sugar, Tay yeah. Diggs, guys, Tay Diggs. Yeah. Um, so. The next one I am a bit more excited about, and that would be an understatement. Uh, the new Johnny Depp movie, Black Mass, uh, is a true story of Whitey Bulger. Uh, who is the brother of state senator and the most infamous violent criminal in the history of South Boston, who became an FBI informant uh, to take down a mafia family invading his turf. This one will come out September 18th in the United States. I mentioned Johnny Depp. He plays Whitey Bulger. Uh, Dakota Johnson is his co-lead. She plays Lindsay Sir. And there's a Cumberbatch sighting. He plays Bill Bulger, who is the uh, state senator that I described. Uh, it actually, there's celebrities all over the place in this movie. Uh, Joel Edgerton's in it. Kevin Bacon, who who's in everything. Adam Scott. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. Peter Sarsgaard. Yeah, Sarsgaard. Corey Stoll. Sure, yeah, just keep naming people. <laughs> or just or just tell me what you thought about the trash. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a trash to treasure. This looks really good. Um, every movie Johnny Depp does from apparently Pirates of the Caribbean until the end of time, he'll be uh, in some type of makeup and everything where you probably can't recognize him. But well, at least this uh, one is a normal person. Yeah, that's true. Somewhat normal if you consider it. Well, a real life person, yeah. Rather, yeah. His, the contacts he wears really freak me out. That give him like that crystal clear blue eyes looks really weird, but. Um, no, this looks really good. I can't wait for this one to come out. And this is, would you say September? Yeah, September 18th. Okay. So you have to wait so, a wait, while. So you, but. 
So you mean to tell me Tonto was not a real life character? Not that uh, I don't think so. Ah, oh, damn. My whole, like, realization of movies. That was also a terrible movie, so I don't know why. Okay, well, but on that note, uh, using uh, the Lone Ranger as a sample, um, whether or not a movie is, is good Is that or the not, one with the, uh, the Nicholas Sparks movie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Lone Ranger. Yeah. Um, whether or not a movie is good or not uh, is regardless of the fact that Johnny Depp gets into character 100% in any role that he does, and he does what he can to make it entertaining, even if the movie's no good. Um, Dark Shadows was a horrible movie, but I loved his role in it. Lone Ranger was a horrible movie, but I thought he was really good in it as Tonto and entertaining. Uh, this is a definite trash of treasure for me. I can't wait hit I can't wait to see him portray Whitey Bulger and um again it's another one of those things that just from the the little bit we've seen it seems like he's thrown himself into this role 110%. Uh and for that reason alone I've been a Depp fan for a while I probably will be for a long time. I I can't wait to see this. Yeah, and myself as a history person as well. Um I they're going to it looks like they're going to portray portray this really well which History um, always interests me, and definitely mafia history is always intriguing to me as well. So, I thought I thought the trailer was fantastic too. It's like you're on, it's you're on edge the entire time during just the trailer. So I thought that it portrayed what the movie could be about really well. So, this is definitely uh, a treasure for me as well. Yeah, and I didn't realize this. Whitey Bulger is actually who Jack Nicholson played in The Departed. Yes. Well, was his name Whitey Bulger, or did he? I think based it, it off of Whitey Bulger. They I'm not based sure he was it. Whitey Bulger. Yeah, his yeah. name was, I think, Frank Costello or something like that. Yeah. But I, I but did, it, he based it off of Whitey Bulger. For yeah, sure, supposedly yeah. it was based off Whitey Bulger. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, uh, and to close out the movie segment here, we have uh, Mr. Holmes, which is the new Sherlock Holmes movie that will be coming out July 17th in the United States. Um, synopsis, an aged, retired Sherlock Holmes looks back on his life, and grapples with an unsolved case involving a beautiful woman. Uh, Ian McKellen is Sherlock. Um, there's people scattered throughout the movie, but Ian McKellen is pretty much top build as Sherlock Holmes. Um, so, Ben, I think it's your turn to start. What did you think of the newer uh, Mr. Holmes trailer? This is the second one to come out. Uh, well, I am a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I'm not just talking the Benedict Cumberbatch version or the Robert Downey Jr. version. I, I've been a fan of the books for a long time, and the one thing that really confuses me about this, and it ha- in no way affects me wanting to see it, I, it's it's a definite trash to treasure for me. Um, however, the last Sherlock Holmes books book is it's called um, the last Sherlock Holmes book was called The Final Problem, and it left it completely open as to whether or not Sherlock Holmes survives because he goes off of a cliff uh, to take out uh, Moriarty, which is his mortal enemy. And, uh, you know, the the Sherlock Holmes movies have touched base on it. The show Sherlock has touched base on, you know, ver- their own versions of this and obviously have continued on. But the books never continued on past that point. As a reader of Sherlock Holmes, you were left wondering whether or not Sherlock ever survived uh, because there were no longer ever any books after that. So I'm guessing this movie is taking, I don't know whether they're going to make mention of that and apparently he survived or I, I, I'm just in confusion about where the the storyline is going to go with that. However, that being said, uh, I love Ian McKellen. I watch pretty much anything that he's in and I I think it looks really good. I, I'll, I might actually go to trailer. I don't, go to movie theaters that often to see dramas. Uh, however, I may actually go and see this one because I think it looks really interesting. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I agree. I'm a big, this, this looks, I don't know. Is this going to be, does it say anywhere if this is going to be like a big release? It, it strikes me as like a limited release. Uh, type I don't of movie. know. It doesn't really say that on. Yeah. It strikes me as limited. Movie. So I don't know if, you know, I don't know if I'll see it in theaters. Um, but, you know, since the, unlike Ben, I, I haven't read like the books and everything, but since the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock TV show has come out, um, I become a little more of a fan of, of Sherlock Holmes related things. Uh, so this just goes, uh, kind of with that. And I'm a, I'm a fan of Ian McKellen and, uh, it does have a lost alum on it. So that always helps. Who's the lost alum? Uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. Okay. Asian guy. <laughs> I figured as much. He played, uh, I think, his Dogen or something like that, and lost. 
Just Google uh, Dogen, D-O-G-E-N, and Lost. Gotcha. And you'll see who I mean. Okay. Yeah, for me, um, I'm a, I'm a, a Sherlock Holmes fan as well, and this kind of I don't really like the, this take on it that he's old and is kind. You know, I thought the the Robert Downey Sherlock's were awesome because um, he's like crafty and he solved cases in his own way. He's, for me, um, Sherlock Holmes is kind of a guy that you know jumps around and goes through these adventures and now he's kind of old and decrepit so what's he just gonna walk around the street and solve it with his mind like which is fine and that's what sherlock holmes always ended up doing he was always smarter than everybody else but he went through these big long extravagant adventures at least for all the sherlock's that i watch and enjoyed um but uh, I, I still wouldn't call a movie about sherlock holmes with ian mckellen in it a dumpster fire because that's an overreaction so I'm in the middle on this one. Um, I probably won't watch it in a theater or anything, but um, I might catch it eventually. Are, have you ever seen the Sherlock, the Benedict Cumberbatch versions? No, I haven't yet, no. I, uh... So, I mean, the, the Benedict Cumberbatch versions are more towards the books, basically, because, I mean, while the Robert Downey Jr. versions are really good, you know, going on these whole big high-speed adventures and things like that, that's really not what Sherlock was in the books. He was more a detective, more than anything, than an action star. Oh, okay, well, um, this goes closer to that then, so that's good for people yeah. who enjoy the books and stuff. I mean, and don't get me wrong, I understand completely why they did it with Robert Downey Jr., It's and it worked very well. I'm a fan of those movies. Mm -hmm. But I think this is more along the lines of what he... Uh, what he was in the books. Oh, well, that's good then. So, so yeah, it'd be better for, for the uh, the so-called purists anyway. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, the the only thing, uh, you know, when you look at Robert Downey and Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock portrayals, he they you know Sherlock comes off as he's kind of like a dick a little bit. You know, he he definitely knows he's smarter than you and know, everything. I I don't know that I see Ian McKellen as being a good dick. I know he played Magneto <laughs> and all that, but. He's just too nice for me. Well, I mean, he's older too, so he might have come to terms with a lot of his his ways at this point. So it's like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this. Yeah, I'll be but I'm yeah, curious. Exactly. Yeah, it's and got then, my interest. That's for sure. Yeah, and then um, to close out the whole segment, we have an HBO documentary um, where an advertisement essentially came out this week for uh, Kurt Cobain montage of heck which is obviously a documentary about kurt cobain's life that will air on hbo may 4th um it's a the quick synopsis is an authorized documentary on the late musician kurt cobain uh, from his early days in aberdeen washington to his success and downfall with grunge band nirvana um it looks like they're gonna have some archived footage of kurt cobain like when he was a kid and certainly uh back behind the scenes with nirvana and things like that um, and then there's going to be some interviews. I know uh, Courtney Love was interviewed. She's in the trailer. So that'll be interesting to get her take on everything. Um, so what did you guys think? I guess it kind of depends on if you were ever a fan or interested in Kurt Cobain when he was alive, if you're going to see it. But um, what did you guys think of the of the trailer? Adam, go ahead and start. Yeah, I mean, I was I was seven when he died. So, uh, you know, I never really got into Nirvana either. So it, it doesn't really interest me too much. Um, documentaries are always kind of cool to watch, but I, I probably won't really be checking it out right away. You know, maybe one day down the road I'll check it out, but, um, you know, I'll, I guess I'll give it a dumpster fire for this one. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of with Adam on this one, um, basically because of the fact that it's, I mean, granted I was a little older, so I got into Nirvana a little bit. I never got into the complete grunge thing, but I enjoyed Nirvana's music. I, I didn't know a lot about Kurt Cobain. However, I do enjoy a good documentary. It's something like Adam. I probably won't watch as soon as it's released. But when it, you know, after it's been out for a while, and I hear all the great ravings and about it and everything, I'll probably eventually add it to my watch list on HBO. So eventually, I'll watch it. But it doesn't. It's nothing that interests me right away at this very moment. So I, I would probably keep it in the dumpster. I'm, I fall right in the middle. Yeah, this uh, I go on the other end here. This is going to be a treasure for me, um, but more because I know I guess the kind of the the legend of Kurt Cobain has grown, and people he's always been an intriguing type of figure uh, because he's one of those celebrities that had all the talent in the world and essentially threw it away, as or at least that's what it looked like for 
the public. Um, and I think it's interesting that they got Courtney Love to talk. Um, I don't know how much she said about Kurt Cobain in the past, but obviously she knew him the most intimately when he was at the top um, and the bottom. And another reason um, is just because HBO is on fire with their documentaries lately with the Scientology documentary and the Snowden documentary that won the Oscar for Best Documentary. So HBO is is kind of on a roll right now. So um, they've convinced me to go ahead and watch their documentaries whenever. And I guess you can, if you count the Robert Durst as a documentary as well, that's that was the uh, the epitome of, of good television this year so far. So yeah. um, that's they, it, they've done enough to intrigue me. So um, I'm going to watch this one when it comes on. Yeah, I mean, um, they definitely do uh, a great job on their documentaries. There's no doubt. Yeah, exactly. So they've done enough to intrigue me. So I'm, uh, I'm going to watch this one when it comes out. Um, so yeah, if, if that's all we have to say, then that's all I have to say. And we'll close the dumpster for the <laughs> and week. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Well, with that being said, let us take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we will have next level news. We will talk about what's coming to Netflix uh, for the month of May. Uh, a little bit later on after that, we will have our interview with Stephanie Weir, and we'll probably wrap things up after that. So stick around. We will be back in a few seconds. Hey, everyone, this is TJ Fine from Bones, and you're listening to the Showcast on Next Level Radio. This is special. Uh, all right, let us continue on with the Showcast for the week, and let us hit the Next Level News. This is Next Level News. All right, this is one we mentioned on our Facebook page earlier this week, but uh, worth mentioning kind of worth mentioning again unfortunately usa network cancels sirens after just two seasons Uh, i'm I'm kind of bummed by this because bigley has been our first two-time guest and he's been awesome every time we've talked to him so um you know anytime we talk to somebody we always wish them luck uh but unfortunately luck ran out for sirens uh the project from dennis leary was the cabler's first scripted half-hour comedy the series followed a group of EMTs in Chicago and starred Michael Mosley, Kevin Daniels, Kevin Bigley, and Jessica McNamee. Uh, Larry produced with uh, Bob Fisher. And I thought it was uh, a Sir- funny show, too. I did, too. I thought it was great. Uh, Sirens had a very passionate fan base, uh, but has learned. Um, we've learned that USA decided not to go forward with the third season because the series didn't find a big enough audience, especially given that the network did not own the property. I think there uh, there's a hashtag going around, hashtag safe sirens uh so i guess there's always the chance it could get picked up by a, if it's uh, not uh, yeah if, if 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 the network didn't own the property there's always a chance it could po- it could pop up somewhere else yeah. so uh but moving on to renewal uh lip sync battle has been renewed for a second season yo uh, i watched the first two episodes this show is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, get ready for more celebrity showdowns because Spike TV has renewed Lip Sync Battle for a second season. Uh, season two will consist of 20 new episodes slated to debut wow. in 2016. How many are they doing for season one? Ten? I think it's only ten. Yeah. Uh, the first season, has, which has boosted Spike's exposure both in television, landscape, and digital arena, has welcomed the likes of Jennifer Lopez, Emily Blunt, John Legend, Common, The Rock, Justin, Justin Bieber. Oh, we haven't seen that one yet. Uh, John Krasinski dressed in drag and Anne Hathaway on a wrecking ball. Um, Did you get to you? That wasn't in the first two, right, Steve? Anne no, Hathaway? I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, just wait till and you get to that one. I haven't seen Tyson yet. I think Tyson's the new one. I think Tyson, I think, was this past week. Yeah, I didn't see that I'm one. I'm either two or three behind. It is the best I, TV show on Spike. I saw a lot of people like completely thrilled with Tyson and I I wasn't. like He didn't lip sync. He just danced. <laughs> Stuff like, it was, it's Mike Tyson. It was, it was still like and like I and I said that I posted that on Facebook and a friend of mine was like I dare you to tell him that to his face. I'm like no thanks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. all right. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be seeing more lip sync battle come in 2016. Um, also in renewal news, uh, Daredevil returning for second season with new showrunners. Uh, Marvel's Daredevil has been renewed for a second season at Netflix with Doug Beatry and Marco Ramirez serving as showrunners uh, as Steven tonight exits. Um, I'm kind of hoping this doesn't change the dynamic of the show. Because any, anytime you change showrunners, you kind of risk that happening. Yeah. yeah. What does a showrunner do? They're they pretty much the, the writers. Oh. 
Yeah, they're pretty much the head writers of the show. So, uh, the show has seen favorable reviews, um, uh, calling it dark, brooding, and violent, and also sickly produced. Uh, the Netflix series was best set on online piracy after its debut with over 2 million users illegally downloading it within its first week of its premiere, which we, we talked about last week. Uh, but we're going to see more Daredevil come 2016 as well. So How, like how far have you gotten so far? I'm about four episodes in. Okay. So, Have you started it yet? I have not, no. I still have okay. like three or four episodes of House of Cards, and then I'll start uh, Daredevil. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I still got to finish House of Cards. Yeah, because of my vacation, I'm actually behind on Game of Thrones, too. So, Gotcha. Oh, only like a week, though, because there's only been like right, two right, episodes. Right. So, um, Moving on. Super Troopers 2 raises $4.4 million total in fundraising campaign. Uh, the Broken Lizard comedy troupe has waged the second most successful crowdfunding campaign for a movie, taking in $4.4 million in 30 days to raise production funds for Super Troopers 2. The Indiegogo campaign, funded by over 50,000 contributors, myself included, uh, ended at midnight Friday with 77% of the $5.7 million record for crowdfunding for a film set in by uh, Veronica Mars' movie on Kickstarter in 2013. I wonder if they'll make a third one then, since they raised so much. It's a possibility. Uh, the Super Troopers met the initial goal of $2 million in 26 hours. <laughs> Assuring that the sequel will go into production this summer, 14 years after the original was released. Uh, Fox, Search, Fox Searchlight had agreed to release the sequel if the $2 million goal was met. So This means I'm going to have to start adding some uh, drops from the first one. From Super Troopers? Yeah, so I can start using those. Uh, perks offered as incentives, which were really cool, uh, that were sold on the first day included a producer title for $10,000, a speaking actor role for $10,000, <laughs> Uh, a trip to the ballpark with the main characters for $15,000, and the patrol car used in the filming for $35,000. Uh, the troupe also offered three $20,000 level incentives in which they will perform a private stand-up comedy show in your town. Wow. Which, which uh, would have been cool. pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, Moving on to more disappointing news for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Uh, Tyler Perry has joined the cast oh. to play scientist <laughs> to play scientist Baxter Stockman. Um, uh, Tyler Perry is set to join the cast of Paramount and Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, in which he'll play scientist Baxter Stockman. Who was like uh, the bug or whatever? Yeah, he was the uh, the one who designed the Mausers, in which Shredder used to to use. Um, they were meant to find rats in the sewers, uh, but Shredder hired him to use it to find Splinter, who is a rat. So, there you go. Uh, Megan Fox and Will Arnett are on board to reprise their roles in the sequel, unfortunately. Uh, while Arrow star Stephen Amell was recently cast as Casey Jones, uh, in which he's in New York right now filming. Yeah, he's already started filming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. He is the only reason I'm going to watch this movie. I'm not going to lie. Because the first one was horrible. I haven't seen the first one yet. I probably won't see it until the second one comes out. But Stephen Amell is really the only reason I'm, I'm even watching it. Uh, moving on, Furious 8 to debut April 14th, 2017. Uh, I thought they were done after 7, but apparently they're going to keep these things going until they run them into the ground. Uh, Furious 8 will hit theaters April 14th, 2017. Vin Diesel confirmed at Universal Cinecon panel in Las Vegas on Thursday. Uh, choking back tears, Diesel told the crowd of theater owners, it means a lot to me to get your blessing. He took the audience back to two years ago when on the same stage at Caesars Palace, Diesel and Paul Walker, the actor who died in a 2013 car crash, said they plan to move forward on a seventh film in the action franchise. Uh, so, uh, obviously they're going to do it without Paul Walker because it's going to be impossible. Well, when you it, make as much as it did, I, I'm not totally surprised. Yeah, I guess looking at it that way, it, it's uh, not... Um, and finally, in Next Level News, probably the one story I'm the most excited about, Galaxy Quest TV series in the works. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I love the Galaxy Quest movie. So, But Paramount Television is shopping a TV spin on the 1999 comedy Galaxy Quest, Galaxy Quest a spoof of the sci-fi TV show that, aired, that starred Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver. Uh, Robert Gordon, who co-wrote the DreamWorks picture, with David Howard is in negotiations to work on the TV adaptation as our original director 
uh, Dean Parasot, and executive producers Mark Johnson and Melissa Bernstein. The movie's conceit, revolving around the cast of a beloved 1970s sci-fi TV series who are inadvertently reunited for a real space trek to help an alien race, seems tailor-made for a series rendition. Uh, it'll be interesting, though, because I, I don't know if they're going to get the original cast to come back and do this. There's too many so, big people. There's too many stars. Well, you've yeah, Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Sam Rockwell, uh, Tony Shalhoub. Um, I, I, in all honesty, I think if they pull some strings, they could get it done. Justin Long uh, was in that. Uh, yeah, that's right. He was. Yeah. So was, yeah. uh, he was the other guy. The they had. Justin Long had like a fat friend. And I, I want to say Jonah Hill, but I feel like that's stereotyping. But, <laughs> it's it was yeah, it wasn't Jonah Hill. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the fat friend was is also famous now. <laughs> um, but if you think about it, I, I, again, like I think if they pulled some strings, they might be able to make this work. Uh, out of all the entire cast, uh, Sigourney Weaver and Alan Rickman are the only two who have not done television before. Tim Allen is currently in television. Tony Shalhoub did about eight seasons of Monk. Uh, Sam Rockwell has done television before. I, I, I don't really know who hasn't done it. Plus, a lot, other than a those lot two. of movie people are, are moving into television, so it's not un- unheard of. Yeah. Uh, I think if they could get Tim Allen on board, there's a chance they could probably get the rest of them on board. So, especially if they keep it like a short, a shorter season, like a 10-episode season, like a lot of the newer shows tend to I do. I mean, even if they can get just one. You know that that should bring in enough of a draw that that people will watch it. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to check it out either way. I'm going to give it a chance either way. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this week's next level news. Uh, speaking of Galaxy Quest, however, uh, a little bit of a segue. Um, I know Galaxy Quest is on Netflix, and Adam, I'm really hoping that in your list, it's one of the things that's not coming off. Netflix this this month. Um, it doesn't give me. I'll have to pull up the the ones going off. This is actually just a list of ones coming on, but I'll find the ones going off for you. But um, this is a list of, of movies coming to Netflix in May, which uh, May first is Friday. This coming Friday. Uh, so I'll start off with May first. Uh, I'll just quick run down uh, all the movies for each day, and you guys can can chime in with with any movies you have some comments on. Uh, so May 1st, you have The Last Waltz, which uh, came out in 1978. Uh, Legally Blonde from 2001. Legally Blonde 2 from 2003. It's Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde. Red, White, and Blonde, yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the 2005 movie, The Prize Winner of Defiance, Ohio. Uh, Shameless, which is a UK television series. Uh, this is the season, the 10th season coming out on Netflix. Uh, Jimmy, All is By My Side. Uh, Longmire, Season 3, Beyond Clueless, No, No, A Documentary, uh, Underclassmen, and then Witnesses, Season 1. So that is, uh, those all come out Friday, May 1st. Uh, any of those that you guys have, have seen and are excited about, like Legally Blonde? Not a one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, keep moving. <laughs> yeah, not a one. Okay. Uh, so going on to May 2nd, uh, I have a feeling we're going to have the same things. There's only two. Uh, first one is La La Loopsie, Festival of Sugary Sweets. Uh, and then Leapfrog <laughs> Letter Factory Adventures, Amazing World Explorer. So I know Steve's excited for La La Loopsie, but other than that, uh, I don't think we really have any. Uh, I'm excited for Leapfrog. Leapfrog? Okay, there you go. Well, sure. you already have more than May 1st. Uh, Why not? <laughs> May 3rd, Anita. <laughs> Uh, D.L. Hughley Clear, which I'm super stoked about. Uh, and then Royal Pains Season 6. You guys Next. excited for uh, D.L. Hughley? I, I'm actually looking forward to Royal Pains. I was actually a fan of that show, and I kind of fell off of it for a little bit. So uh, this is an opportunity for me to catch up. That's so, a USA show? Adding, yes, it was. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I, I want to say is. I don't know if it's still on or not. Um, but if they're adding season six, it means that one through five are on Netflix already, which means I can catch up. Okay. <laughs> Time out. So. How much can you tell me about the Anita movie? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> uh, I can't tell you anything about it I, I without just, looking well, it up. Oh, uh, you can't. It just says what the title is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Uh, say I mean, I can tell you what. The, yeah, I can tell you the year. Um, 2013. All right. Never mind. There's a, rated X, there's a rated X Anita movie that came out in 1973. Swedish Nymphet? 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's probably not that. Well, that's all they give me on IMDb. Um, here's for hoping. Chances are it's uh, chances are it is the Anita that came out in 2013, which is a documentary on African American Anita Hill. Uh, she was somebody who accused the Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of unwanted sexual advances. Well, see, it still has to Senate do with sex, Senate sex, hearings. Sex, so, well, there you go. That's true. <laughs> they're, really, they're practically like a sequel or something. Uh, so, May, let's go to May 5th. Uh, a few best men, uh, which came out in 2011. I, I don't know if this is a spoof of a few good men. I, I assume. Uh, actually, no. It's it's not a spoof, but it it's about a Wedding, I guess. But <laughs> uh, May sixth, the longest week. Uh, May eighth, everybody. Tyler Perry, a uh, Medea Christmas. Oh boy! Can't wait for that. How are they still making those movies? Well, it's it's not because be people are still Netflix. such a weird. Well, and, and people are still stupid enough to go see them. It has such like a, a following. It's weird. Uh, also coming out Netflix original Grace and Frankie. Uh, that's available May eighth. Uh, and then the entire first season, all five episodes of the Netflix original Adventures of Puss in Boots. Sweet. So I know Steve is, again, excited for that one. <laughs> is Ben Darris back? Uh, as Puss in Boots? I don't know. Probably not. Grace and Frankie, by the way, is a comedy. With a ton of famous people in it. Maybe. Jane Are you Fonda, asking me? Lily Tomlin, me? Martin Sheen, Sam Watterson. Oh, okay. Well, uh, um... Eric Balza does uh, Puss in Boots. So, sorry to burst your bubble. Mm. Uh, let's go to May 9th. The Liberator and Jin, J-I-N-N. Uh, May 12th, Fruitvale Station, Magical Universe, and Extraterrestrial. Not the E.T. movie. Uh, May 13th is The Identical... May fourteenth. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to Fruitville, Sta- Fruitville Station. I actually, or Fr- Fruitvale Station. I actually heard that was pretty good. Yeah, that one actually does look good. I have heard some some good reviews, of it. and that's based on a true story too, I believe. And Michael Jordan is is in that as well. Michael B. Jordan. Let's be more specific. I keep thinking number twenty three, <laughs> not number forty five. <laughs> no. Okay. No, you stick with the classic Bulls, Michael Jordan. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, May 14th, a uh, bunch of series come out. The complete series of all of these. Uh, Modern Marvels, The Universe, Hoarders. Did any of you watch Hoarders? No. Uh, no. That's good. good. No. Uh, American Restoration, Dance Moms. Did any of you watch Dance hey. Moms? Hell no. <laughs> Sorry. I'm actually surprised. Uh, Counting Cars. <laughs> How did and... What's Her Face get her start? Was she a dance mom? You had, um Oh, crap. I'm not sure who what's her face is. Yes, you do. the The famous hillbilly family that now has their own oh. show. I think she started as a dance mom. You talking about uh, the the little overweight girl? Yeah, Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> no, no, that honey that Boo-Boo. wasn't a dance Boo-Boo. mom. That wasn't a dance She's mom. Like a that pageant. was um, the pageant moms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then also coming out. My apologies. Out <laughs> you are forgiven. <laughs> Uh, because Duck Dynasty, the complete series, also comes out May 14th. Yeah. I know a lot of people who are fans of that. I've never seen the show, but I know plenty of people who watch that like, and rave about it. I, I don't get it, personally. Me neither. Michael I, B. I Jordan's in that, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, May 15th, Granite Flats, season one through three. Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, season four. Cyber Seniors... Give me shelter and dog fight. Dog being spelled D A W G. Nice. Give me shelter. I'm looking forward to seeing. Is that the uh, documentary on on the Rolling, Rolling Stones. Stones? Yes. Yeah, that that probably is going to be pretty good. And I, I heard it's really well done. Oh, really? Yeah. By the way, dog fight uh, came out in 2015, and they still are spelling dog D A W G. Um, give me shelter is not the Rolling Stones documentary. It's not? It's a documentary uncovering the most prevalent issues in the animal world through the eyes <laughs> of individuals dedicating their lives to them daily. It's like the complete opposite I, of the Rolling Stones. I could have swore that was the Rolling Stones documentary. <laughs> Maybe it's called Gimme Shelter. G-I-M-M-E. Um, is... No, there's a movie called Gimme Shelter that has Rosario Dawson on yeah, it. That's, um, yeah, G-I-M-M-E. Oh, yeah, there is a Gimme Shelter documentary. It's spelled G-I-M-M-E. Yeah. But that's from like 1970. 
Maybe you should check it what out. The, what the hell was the name of the new Rolling Stones documentary? Not this one. Uh, so but, I'm interested in the Anthony Bardone series um, coming out. That looks pretty good. Parts Unknown. This is just mm-hmm. season four. So one through three is probably already on there. Yeah, yeah. It's a good show. Oh, you've Watch seen it. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, as bad as it sounds, I don't think Ben is any longer interested in Give Me Shelter. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, SPCA will be giving us a call. Uh, May 16th, first period. I can only imagine what that's about. Uh, either PMS or hockey. <laughs> it's either about a 13-year-old girl or... Either way, they can both get bloody. Ouch. Oh. Jesus Christ. I, I'm not even going to play a, a drop on that one. <laughs> Good. Don't. That was horrible. <laughs> it's, from, it's a 2013 movie uh, starring nobody you know. Okay. Uh, May 17th. I can't wait for this one. Tinker Bell and the Legend of the Never Beast. <laughs> yep. Uh, but when we were in Disney, they have in their buses, they have like little posters uh, along the top of it. Uh, and there was one about that. Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. Uh, May 19th, Before I Disappear, Girlhood, which I think is uh, it follows a girl growing up for 12 years. Pretty sure. Cool. Uh, and Zom Beavers, which is right up, up Ben's alley. That is. I will watch that. <laughs> I will watch the hell out of that movie. Uh, Zom Beavers. Which is exactly <laughs> about what you think it would be about. A fun weekend turns into madness and horror for a bunch of groupies looking for fun in beaver and in a beaver infested swamp. Tell you what, I am if in. you're if you're thinking about animals that like to bite and eat things, it's not much worse than a beaver. So, whoever came up with that movie isn't is not far off. Yeah, sounds like I a sci-fi in. film. Well, that's like the uh, as, opposed, the movie. as opposed to a factually correct documentary. Yes. That's that's like the movie Black Sheep, which was not the Tommy, not the uh, Chris Farley version, but the more, I think, like 2012 version, which was about zombie sheep. Really? <laughs> uh huh. Sweet. Uh, well, they can be fun if you give them a chance. The, Most of them are horrible, the but if you beavers. give them a chance, some of them could be fun. Oh, I'm gonna watch the hell out of that. Zombies. I will. Abs- I am 100 percent serious. I will watch that movie. <laughs> um, May 21st, Between uh, Season One, which is a Netflix original. Um, Netflix is coming out with a ton of originals. I mean, it, it feels like like once a month a new one's coming out. Well, that's good though. I mean, that's you know that that's how they're finding a new audience, which is good. Yeah, I'm trying to see what this one's about. Uh, it's a Canadian thriller series, so there you go. That's all you need to know. Uh, yeah. Finally, something good coming out. May 22nd, Inglorious Bastards. It's right. coming out. Awesome. Uh, Transporter, the series, season one. Jen Kirkman, I'm gonna die alone, and I feel fine, which is another Netflix original. Well, that's a stand-up yeah, comedy, yeah, special. Uh, and Jen Kirkman's pretty funny, so that that should be interesting. What was she from? That doesn't name doesn't ring a bell. She she's still, I guess she's still kind of considered an up-and-comer. But I've seen her uh, her specials on Comedy Central and stuff. She's pretty funny. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Uh, the other one, the long strange trip of Bob Weir. Maybe he's married to Stephanie Weir. I don't know. H two O. It's probably it's probably Bob Weir from The Grateful Dead. Oh, okay. Uh, H sorry H, <laughs> no I mean anyone anytime you want to actually correct me that's fine because I just make stuff up H two O Mermaid Adventures Netflix original uh, Richie Rich season two Netflix original didn't know there was a season one neither did I but uh, now you can go check them both out uh, starting May twenty second uh, May twenty third Antarctica a year on ice and also the Box Trolls there's a movie I finally have heard of. Um, and I'll probably check that out too. The box trolls, I did yeah. pretty well at the box office. I think. Yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, May twenty fourth, <laughs> Love and Honor, and then Welcome to the Punch. May twenty sixth, Graceland seasons one and two. May twenty seventh, Before I Go to Sleep, and May twenty ninth, Mako Mermaid season three, and Hot Girls Wanted. So actually, this is a pretty, in my opinion, a pretty uh, Dull. slow. <laughs> Month for yeah. Netflix. I already own Inglorious Bastards, so thank God that segment's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to the ones uh, I'll, I'll run down. Actually, there are fifty-seven movies disappearing from Netflix. This yeah, week. watch. There's going to be a ton of great movies leaving, and all these horrible ones coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, there were fifty-five, maybe that were added. So I think we're still a net loss of two movies. Uh, for everyone who has Netflix, you might want to ask for a couple cents back. 
Uh, May 1st leaving. Six Bullets, 12 Dogs of Christmas, Great Puppy Rescue, A Knight's Tale. The, oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's actually a good movie. Uh, the I have it on Blu-ray, the, so I'm not too worried. The Accused. Uh, Airplane is g- getting off Netflix. What? Yeah, Airplane Two is also getting off Netflix. The sequel. I have the first. I have the first one on Blu-ray too. Um, so I'm all I want for Christmas. Again. Along came Polly, leaving Netflix. No more JTT. No, sorry. That's by the way for all I want for Christmas. Anyone who hasn't seen uh, either of that or Along Came Polly, JTT. Oh no, uh, no JTT is I'll be home for Christmas. Oh, oh okay. I'm wrong. No. I'm sad that I know that, but I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, also leaving on May 1st, uh, An American Haunting, Baby Genius, The Four Seasons, Baby Genius, Underwater Adventures, thank God. Uh, Basketball is leaving Netflix. You say thank God, but you're going to be using these sooner than later. What, Baby Genius? For your own kid. I don't even know what that is. Oh. Your wife does. I don't think I'm so. I'm sure. I think, oh. I think it's it's nothing. It's like a little kid show or something. So anyway, basketball is leaving? Yes, basketball. <laughs> Bitter Moon, <laughs> Boys Don't Cry, Bratz, Babies the Movie, The Brothers Bloom, Call Me Claws, Call Me Crazy, a five film, Cecil B. Demented, Deuces Wild, <laughs> <laughs> Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Sorry, Steve. Uh, Fantastic <laughs> Voyage, Finding Forrester, Friday the, th- That's a good movie. Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood, uh, Funny Face, Icky the Killer, Into the Blue 2, The Reef, The Jewel of the Nile. Okay, I'm just going to start skipping some of these. <laughs> Robocop <laughs> is leaving Netflix. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2, Secret of the Ooze is leaving Netflix. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that kind of sucks. That's a, that's a great movie. If you're going to take that off, you should at least put the first one back on. Uh, True Justice Season 1 and Valkyrie, Tom Cruise film. Uh, leaving on May 2nd, just one movie, Flight. The Denzel Washington film, which I actually did watch when it was on Netflix. So they took um, that off already. They're taking it off May second. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that because I want to see that. Yeah, it's movie. good. It's good. So you have it's to really depressing. <laughs> it is actually pretty depressing. Uh, so. It's kind of long too. I think it's longer than it needed to be. All right, that's getting bumped up to the top of my queue tonight, so I can make sure I watch it before May. Yeah, 2nd. you have till that's a Saturday next Saturday May second. Um, also, you have until Sunday May third to watch The Princess Diaries two. Royal engagement. Oh, getting bumped up. <laughs> That's actually ahead of flight now. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's still behind uh, flight because I got an extra day on that. May fifth, Skyfall is leaving. Um, yeah, that could go. I have, I don't think I've seen that one. Is that the second one? It's it's not the best. Um, it's not the best Daniel Craig Bond. What is the Ca- best um, Casino Royale? Oh God, Casino Royale, without a doubt. It's okay. so good. <laughs> it's really it good. Really good. Like, it completely renewed my faith in the Bond series. Not that they were bad, but they were they were kind of getting a little tired. And then when Daniel Craig came in and did Skyfall, like I'm like, okay, I'm a total Bond fan again. What's the, the newest one that's coming out soon, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming out, I think, I want to say end of the year. Okay, so we got some time. Yeah. Uh, May 12th, Grimm's Snow White. Which just came out a couple of years ago. Um, May, let me skip ahead a little bit. May seventeenth, Bridezilla season nine. It's going off of Netflix. Uh, Cloud nine also going off of Netflix. And Dane Cook, Rough Around the Edges, live from Madison Square Garden. Uh, that's actually a good stand-up May special. Yeah, that's he's center stage, right? It's a big yeah, circle. it's theater. It's it's comedy on the round. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, actually, I wanna I'm gonna have to May nineteenth, uh, Red Dawn. Is leaving Netflix, the newer one with um, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth. I'm gonna have to check that Hemsworth. out because I, I, that one and Cabin in the Woods are two Chris Hemsworth movies I haven't seen yet that I want to. Cabin in the Woods is great. I love that movie. Um, Red Dawn is actually in my queue, so it looks like I'm gonna have to bump that yeah, one. Yeah, and too. Um, um, Hunger Games fame Josh Hutcherson is also in that one. Red Dawn. In Red yeah. Dawn. Uh, and then also just to round it out a couple more, May 23rd, Silent House, uh, May 28th, The New Guy, and then May 31st, The Haunting in Connecticut, Two Ghosts of Georgia. So that's everything have, that's leaving. Have you ever seen The New Guy? Yes. Yes, I have. Either one, either one of you, Steve, have you ever seen it? Uh, is that the one with the little weasel guy as the main character? Yeah. 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 yeah DJ Qualls. Yeah. And, uh, Elijah Dushku from... 
from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and True Lies, believe it or not. Zoe Deschanel is in that movie. New guy. Was she? Yeah. Oh. oh. It's been a while since I've seen it. You know who else so, is in that? But I, I kind of liked it. Yes, <laughs> he's the, he's the one that like like kind of like gets him tough. Does he go to like jail or something or no? I think yeah, so. Yeah, that's what I thought. I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember that uh, film. Yeah, it's I been a while since I've seen yeah, it. That too. guy just looks so weird, though. DJ Qualls, so creepy looking. So, um, but yeah, that's that's it for Netflix at least. Cool. Uh, all right. In that case, uh, we're gonna take another break. When we come back. Uh, we're going to have our interview that Steve and I did with Stephanie Weir from FX as Comedians. So hang tight. We'll be back. Hi, this is Chris Gear from the awesome new FX show, You're the Worst, and you are listening to Next Level Radio. All right. Welcome back to the showcast and time for a guest this week. Uh, our guest on the showcast this week is a writer. She's a producer, an actress, a comedian, who you might know from her extensive run on the show Mad TV. But now you can see her every week alongside Billy Crystal and Josh Gad on the new FX show, The Comedians. Please welcome Stephanie Weir. Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, how you doing? Are you calling us from West Coast right now? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm calling you from Pasadena. Oh, nice. How's the weather out there today? You know, it's like 68 degrees. It's a little overcast. It's absolutely delightful because it's usually pretty toasty. Where are you guys? We're right outside of Philadelphia, and I should learn to know better to ask that question on okay. on on days like we're having today because we're, we're having some miserable weather today. Nothing but rain and wind and tornado warnings and... It's 68 oh, degrees, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> we got the temps. I'm not going to get any sympathy that it's a little overcast and <laughs> I had to wear a vest today. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we ha we're starting to build a great relationship with FX. We've talked to a number of people from their shows and such. Uh, we're about three episodes into The Comedians as of now. Um, and not everyone has had an opportunity to check it out just yet. I, I myself have seen the first two episodes. I know Steve has as well. Uh, but for those of our listeners who haven't had a chance to, to watch it yet, tell us a little bit about the show and, and your character on the show. Um, it's a show Billy, Crystal, and Josh Gad play themselves, and they've kind of been thrown together by the FX network to put on a, 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 a sketch show. Billy Crystal wants to, get, wants to get back into sketch, and but he's not relevant enough on his own, and so they throw this young comedian at him. And it's um, kind of a behind-the-scenes show of those two trying to get their sketch show on the right track and actually to be picked up by FX and on the air. So it's kind of got a behind-the-scenes feel to it, a very mockumentary-style um, show. I play a producer um, who's pretty incompetent and is, you know, just <laughs> – holding things together by a thread and she's often kind of the the, the buck stops with her when problems happen. She, she gets left holding the bag and is just trying to gracefully handle that. But um, a lot of improv in this show, it, you know, even though it is scripted for the most part. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that kind of lays groundwork down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you got kind of hinted at it, but the show does get, it's awkward at times, but that, I mean, it's certainly on purpose to get the laughs that way. Um, it's a, it, that kind of comedy. Uh, and your character, Kristen, might be the most awkward of all of them, uh, to say the least. How do you, uh, get into that mindset, I guess, heading into, heading into the show, and, uh, do you enjoy playing that type of role? I really enjoy playing that type of role. Sadly, it's not a far cry from, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say it was just really good method acting, but um, I have a lot of experience with awkward. Uh, so, <laughs> so I really, I really kind of call, called on that just to play this character. And you know, incompetence and you know, kind of being flustered and low man on the totem pole is a great gift to be given <laughs> as a comedian. You know. It's just, yeah. it, 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 so much fun to play the underdog, so um, it's a blessing for sure. Yeah, now you know you're going to have to give us one of those uh, stories where you don't have to act to be in the awkward situations, right? 
yes, my God. Let's see, where can I start? Um, oh, you know, okay, here's what, it's, it's kind of showbiz related, but when I was in Chicago, I, my agent said, I want, you know how to ice skate? And I said, yeah, I, yeah, yes, yes, I know how to ice skate, absolutely. Sure. What's this about? What's this about? And she's like, well, it's an audition, it's for a commercial, and you have to, you know, skate on ice, and um, and I think you have to hold a, a chainsaw at some point. And I was like, I, yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, count me in. And yeah. so I show up. I show up to the ice skating audition and like over the weeks and I found a pair of tights and like maybe a kind of a little skirty kind of thing. But anyway, it's me and probably 10 Olympic ice skaters. <laughs> um, and um, I, out on the ice and anyway, the director gets there and is watching us all warm up. And I mean, I'm just a nuisance. People are, are almost running into me. I can barely turn, you know, <laughs> while I'm standing and, uh, finally, he kind of makes an announcement, and I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> he says, okay, if you can't skate and, you know, like spin around twice, um, let's just have you go ahead and leave the ice. And everybody just looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was so per- person, but I was like, you know, as long as you, you know, walk the walk, you know, who, who's going to notice? So anyway, it's terribly awkward. <laughs> And, you know, that, that's just one instance of trying to pretend like you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I know, I know it. It, to a degree, it has a little bit of an office kind of feel, you know, with the talking to the camera every once in a while and such. And, yeah, for and, sure. and some of the moments that you have had so far on the show where you're talking to the camera are so awkward that they are just laugh out loud funny. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> And I know the show itself, you had mentioned, you know, it's, it's Billy Crystal playing himself and Josh Gad playing himself. The show puts together these two people who are, they're funny in their own right by themselves. And they're two people you wouldn't necessarily have ever imagined pairing them up together. Um, but when you do, and obviously it shows in the show that it's, it, it tends to click. I mean, there's, there's moments where it's very awkward and then it can shift to kind of sincere. And then all of a sudden in a second, it just shifts right back to awkward again. Um, and, and I have to imagine that it's working with those guys on the set every day. It's got to be something you look forward to. So much. And one of those, you know, moments that when it all kind of came together and it looked like I was going to get this part and you kind of, you know, realize like, oh gosh, like I'm, you know, and that's the great thing about Hollywood. The weird thing about it is you never know what's going to land in your lap. And it was very dreamy to kind of wake up and be like, oh, wow, I get to go work with Billy Crystal and Josh Gad today on this, you know, really fun show. So, um, yeah, it is pretty awesome. And something about their dynamic, it's like you're, you're right. You don't – and you wouldn't necessarily put them together. And the chemistry is um, there and then it's not. And then it's there and then it's not, which is kind of true to – why these two have been chosen. It's not an obvious fit. And it kind of, um, they have their ups and downs, and I think that that's, hopefully what's making it a good story is you don't know if this is actually going to work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you mentioned in the beginning when uh, describing the show that it's a mockumentary of a sketch comedy, essentially. Um, And you happen to have gained a lot of notoriety yourself for a little sketch comedy show called Mad TV. Um, have you been able to take those experiences at all, series at all, and uh, use them in the in the comedians? Um, you know, it's your. I've used it in the capacity that we had line producers and um, other producers at Mad TV who, mm-hmm. you know, who are on the who are you know in, in the in, out in the the, the wings and. Um, having, you know, and so it's true to the world that I was used to in that. I'm just playing a different role in it. And they had kind of had to be the heavies and the uncreative types and the, a bit of the downers to come in and, and, you know, say, hey, we can't afford to do this sketch or, um, you know, the ne- deliver bad news. And um, in that capacity, the, my Mad TV experience has definitely helped. Um, it's also been kind of, you know, I love sketch, and just and I feel like there's a lot of really funny sketches that we've plugged into the show that they've plugged into the show, and um, I appreciate that, that they're funny sketches because I know how hard that is to do. 
Um, me personally, I'm not in any of the sketches, so uh, which is also true to my character. Like I, I think she probably wants to be a sketch comedian, but has zero talent. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, and so that's the fun energy to play. Where I think in the back of her mind, if somebody said, "Hey, an actress just dropped out. Who could we use?" <laughs> she would totally step up, you know. So, so in that capacity, yeah, I have drawn on my on my experience in SUV. Awesome. <laughs> um, you know, through the show, you you just kind of touched base on this a little bit too. Through the show, you get to see a little bit of the, the inner workings as to what it takes to put together a sketch comedy show. And, and as Steve said, you definitely have experience with that with Mad TV. Um, and obviously the show is, you know, a bit of a satire and a mockumentary and it tends to embellish and exaggerate quite a bit for uh, comedic effect. But I still have to imagine that many of the points that you guys touch upon still ring true, like writers, you know, getting sketches on and things like that. Um, how would you say what we see in the show compares to what actually happens behind the scenes of a, of a sketch comedy show? You know, they're, they're, uh, obviously you can't go as in-depth because we're visiting different parts of, like, their personal life and then a little bit of the writer's room and then a little bit of the live sketch show. Um, but it is true to form. There's a lot of jockeying when it comes to getting your sketch on the air and a lot of ego involved. Um, you know, what one person thinks is funny, another group does not, and there's no right or wrong about that. It's totally, you know all subjective to whoever has, you know, the most powerful kind of wins, and, and you see a little bit of, of that. So I would say it, it really does nail it um, to to a great ex- extent, I think. Um, uh, yeah. Did I answer your question? I yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, it's good to see that, too. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually the right answer comes out. <laughs> Around. <laughs> <laughs> um, stepping stepping outside the show um, and into the research portion a little bit, you've also uh, had a lot of success in writing and producing shows, uh, not only for Mad TV but also for networks that comes. Like uh, Raising Hope was really successful, and uh, the Millers recently. Um, are there any projects on the horizon that we can look forward to from uh, Stephanie Weir? Nothing that, nothing solid enough to like to to, to dangle out there, even for myself. Um, I, you know, I have a, a few ideas that I'm working on my own that are, you know, I, I love the multi-camera form, format, you know, in front of a live audience. Um, it's not, it's not the most popular uh, style of comedy right now, but I, it has a real soft spot for me, and I hope at some point in my career to, to work again in that capacity and maybe be in a, in a multi-cam. I just, I just like the, the point out of that show. I think Cheers and um, even, you know, every, everybody on the and those shows have a, sure. I just feel like you can tune into them at any point and it feels a void, you know. You can kind of space out for a minute, enjoy that kind of comedy, and, and I'd love to, to be part of something like that again. Um, there are a few shows that I've been asked to possibly join as far as uh, 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 writing on them, and, and, and hopefully those will pan out. But again, not all too, too, too soon to so talk about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I gotta say too, Steve had just mentioned it that you were a writer on Raising Hope. I was a, such a huge fan of that show. Um, I, w- I was so disappointed when it got, you know, when it, when the show ended. But I, I watched that show religiously every week. I was such a big fan of that show. Oh, well, thank you. You know, I, I, I came on, I was only on for one season and, 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 um, was just asked, uh, I didn't have any hand in creating it or, or any, in the, in the ground level. I feel like I need to be very fair with that. Greg Garcia was, had, had asked me if I would join the writing staff and, and I did. And he also created the Millers and I went on to help write with, with that. And those are kind of his babies and, and brainchild, but they, it was a blast. To, he's, a, he's a terrific guy and, and so talented, and it was a blast to work on both of those shows. So I think I'm I'm glad you enjoyed them. Yeah, um, I know we're gonna we're gonna get ready to wrap things up with you, but um, in our research, I had I did notice one thing on online about you, and you know how sometimes you you take the things you read online with a grain of salt. So I figured I'd just ask. Huh? Um, I yes. saw one of the first things you had ever done. Were you on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries? <laughs> yes, I was. I've been looking for that episode for such a 
long time. Okay, so here's the backstory, <laughs> which is so interesting. My first cousin, um, uh, uh, I've had more than one. Um, my first husband and I were were kind of living in a in a van uh, for the summer, and I stopped into my hometown, and they were shooting this episode of Unsolved Mysteries in my hometown, and my dad, who uh, you know can sniff out an opportunity, was like, uh, "Sugar, you got to audition for this. We all got to audition. We, we got to get in on this." And so, I mean, ha- that was, I had no credits. I'd never done anything for television. I'd just done some, like, stage acting with, you know, in college or whatever. And, um, he, uh, I, my, and you know what? My, my first husband plays the, the killer in it. Um, so, so yes, I was in an Unsolved Mysteries episode. And my brother was kind enough to notice that I looked directly into the camera. Um, <laughs> When I did it, so he sent me a tape once of just me, almost like a meme, and this was before memes were even popular, but it was me looking up into the camera about a hundred times. And uh, along, with, along with the tape, he said, you know, don't quit your day job. So, <laughs> well, well, we'll, yeah, yeah it's, mm-hmm, sorry? No, no, I was just going to say, we'll, we'll put the word out to our listeners, and if in their, you know, the way they work online, if anybody can find it, we'll tweet it out to you. So that we can, uh, so that you can get it. Thank you. That was so good. It's called the burning businessman because somebody dumped a businessman in a dumpster and set him on fire and then sold his pickup truck. So that is mysterious. there you go. Yeah. So I the lady who did the murderer's laundry. He asked if I was washing bloody clothes, and no questions asked. I said sure. <laughs> you were married to the guy at the time in real life, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll, we'll if, if we can find it, we'll definitely tweet it out to you so that you can get a copy of it. Um, and we're gonna, right. we're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna let our listeners know that we want them to follow you on Twitter as well at Stephanie Weir, uh, S T E P H N I E. And I want to make no, and I, and I have to be really honest. I well, they, they, they can follow me. I, I really don't tweet. I, I, my excuse is that I'm still learning how to. You know, get my presence on the CB radio. And so I'm really, uh, I'm really good at that, then I'll move on to tweeting. Alright. Well, we'll, we'll find a way to get, to get it to you if we find it. Okay. So. Alright, great. Uh, but also we want to encourage everybody to check out the comedians every Thursday night, 10 p.m. on FX. Uh, and they can follow the comedians on Twitter as well, which is at the comedians. So, um, Steph, thanks a lot. This, this has been great. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Good luck with everything in the future and good luck on the comedians. Thanks so much. You too. Uh, All right, guys, we are going to take another break. We will be back in just a bit. Hang tight. Hey, this is Nick Clifford, and you're listening to Next Level Radio. Hey, special thanks to Stephanie Weir for that interview. She was a lot of fun. She was a lot of fun to talk to. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And so. she was really good in the, the, most, the latest episode of The Comedians. She was she had a kind of a prevalent role, and she was really funny in everything that she did. Like she mentioned, I'm so, she's good at being awkward, and that's exactly what she did yeah. in the new episode. Yeah, I'm still an episode behind. I've only seen the first two. got to watch the third one, yeah. so i got to get caught up. So, uh, But let's move on, get ready to wrap things up, and let us hit Adam's weekly update. And now... The Showcast Weekly Update. All right. Uh, this week's weekly update is not brought to you by anybody because I didn't have time to figure something out. Uh, <laughs> let's start things off. Abercrombie & Fitch has announced that they will no longer have shirtless models greeting customers outside their stores. Uh, instead, they will have to be greeted by something called employees wearing undersized shirts and overpriced clothing. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Um, yeah, which is kind of new for them, so... Yeah. Uh, a Russian court has jailed three women uh, this week for twerking in front of a World War II memorial. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your joke or the story? <laughs> didn't even have, didn't even have to get to the punchline. I should just move along. Because I actually don't think the punchline's as funny as... I'm, I don't think I'm going to get as good of a reaction I, as Steve just gave for the actual story. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody who twerks should be arrested. <laughs> 
Seriously. Uh, I'll start it over, though. A Russian court jailed three women for twerking, uh, twerking in front of a World War II memorial this week. Uh, this comes on the heels of an incident when two newlyweds were arrested after doing the Macarena at their reception. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, see, not a noise from Steve. Over there. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, just the word twerking is funny. Uh, new research <laughs> suggests that if you have a song stuck in your head, chewing a stick of gum can actually help you get rid of it, which is much easier than the previous alternative of blowing your brains out. <laughs> then uh, I could have so used that this weekend. Oh, it happens all the time. It's annoying. I know. Uh, this is a big um, story this week. Bruce Jenner had sat down with Diane Sawyer in an interview. Um, in that interview, he did say that Kanye West actually helped Kim Kardashian come around on his transgender lifestyle. Uh, West also helped Kim realize that transgender involves sexuality and isn't a Hasbro movie starring Shia LaBeouf. (laughs) (laughs) And then also actually following the interview, E! has announced that a new docuseries will center around Jenner. Uh, Though it won't premiere until July, Bruce is already the most normal female Jenner to appear on E! (laughs) (laughs) That's that's sad but true. Uh, And that is your weekly update. So awesome. Uh, cool. Let's get ready to wrap things up. First things first, we have to extend a special thanks to DeSales University. Is it DeSales University or college? University. University. Uh, they are allowing us use of their studio, of their radio studio on campus, which is pretty damn cool. So our podcast next week is actually going to be recorded, all three of us in the same room in a uh, professional studio. It should be interesting. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting, but it's going to come in handy in the future for some, uh, hopefully some in-person guests, uh, that'll be coming to places like Music Fest and Sands Bethlehem up in Bethlehem, PA and Allentown Fair and Allentown Fair. Basically anything in the Lehigh Valley, hopefully we'll be able to use this. So a special thanks to DeSales University for allowing us use of their studio and. We're going to be recording, like I said, we'll be recording next week's podcast there. And we're going to be touching on a topic that we've been wanting to do for a while. And I figure all three of us in the same room is the best way to do it. Uh, No interview next week, uh, but we are going to be spending a lot of time talking about some of the best cover songs that are out there. Uh, We're going to talk about our some of our favorites, some of the worst ones we've ever heard. Well, no interview Uh, scheduled as of yet. As of yet. That may change. Yeah, there's actually, there were a couple that... Uh, where possibilities I haven't heard back yet, but there's a chance that we could be a last minute addition. So, cool. Uh, check our Facebook and Twitter. Uh, also, by this time next week, by the pod- by the time we record next week, all three of us will have seen Avengers: Age of Ultron. So I'm sure we're gonna have a ton to talk about when it comes to <sighs> yeah, when it comes to that movie. So. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing that. Uh, so before we get out of here, be sure to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash next level radio online. Follow us on Twitter at NXT level radio. Check out our website, uh, for all of our podcasts and interviews and previous podcasts and interviews, uh, as well as some other cool content that we throw up from time to time, www.nextlevelradioonline.com and subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, just go to the iTunes store and search for next level radio. Uh, I believe that is it. Unless anybody else has anything else. Um, although I didn't partake, thank you, uh, to Stephanie Weir for coming on and thanks to, uh, FX for giving us some more uh, people to talk to. It's always fun. But uh, a big thank you to everyone who downloaded last week's podcast uh, with TJ Thine, oh, which yeah. uh, is the the highest, um, most downloads in the shortest amount of time for us for a podcast of, you know, at all. So um, thanks for everyone who pushed it for us. Uh, I know the, the nice people behind his website actually put it on his front page on the website, tjthine.com. Uh, so thank you to them. Um, and if you're returning from list after listening to that podcast, if you're listening to this one uh, as a, a first-time listener from last week, thank you for uh, tuning back in. Yeah, definitely. So I agree with everything that you just said. That was It was really cool that that podcast got downloaded as quickly as it did, as fast as it did. As many times, yeah. So, I mean, as, crazy. As many times it did. So that's, that's awesome. We were all blown away by that. So that's, again, I, I extend the thanks to that as well. So, Steve, anything for on your end as far as anything else? Mm, watch sports on Saturday. You won't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a generalized comment. Well I love put. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Saturday, as you put it, too, is like one of the biggest sports days of the year, isn't it? Of this year. It's the best sports day of this year, yeah. Of this year. Yeah. Hockey playoffs, basketball playoffs, yeah. baseball, 
Kentucky Derby. I was going to say Pacquiao. Pacquiao. And the Mayweather Pacquiao, Pacquiao versus uh, at night, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that is a big day. God, I'm not going to even I don't know where to put my time. So, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, cool. So with that being said, we are out of here. Enjoy your week. We will hopefully hear you again. Uh, hopefully you will hear us again next week. Uh, with that being said, we'll see you around the bend, guys. Take care. Later. Bye.